Hi there. The John Deere X155R is up to uh, 500 working hours now, so I thought this would be a good time to do uh, another service on it. So I'll just do uh, a bit of a video showing how I go about giving it a basic service. So this is a 2016 manufactured mower, and I did another video of it after I'd done about 50 hours or something like that, probably about two years ago now. And uh, I was showing I had quite a few teething problems with the machine initially. Um, if you want to watch that video, it's in the link in the description below. Uh, problems with the uh, steering rack and the, the rear box, because this is like the sort of Mark II version of the X155R, um, which has been replaced by a newer model again now, but there you go. Um, they did redesign the back end where the box fits on, and the, this version isn't as good as the previous one. So there were a couple of issues with it to start with. Um, so fi over 500 hours now, just over, and uh, yeah, police report it's had no major issues at all in the last, um, well, over a year, nothing at all wrong with it. Um, you might notice there's a, a bit missing here. This, I don't know how good John Deere's welds were on this, but that's come off. But then it's been on and off the trailer hundreds of times, and I park it right right at the front of the trailer. So it's, I suppose it, it gets a gentle knock now and again as it does. That's what it's meant for, but I don't know how good these welds were. So there's that. That's not really a problem. Um, I don't think I've had any any other issues with it. It's been, uh, it's been a good machine, very reliable. It's only a domestic use machine anyway, really, and I'm using it for commercial use, and uh, it's been brilliant, really. This one's got a 42-inch cut. It's got two blades on it. It's got a collection box on this one. It's got about 16 horsepower, uh, about 650 cc, this one. And yeah, it's pretty reliable. So uh, we'll do a bit of work on it now to try and keep it that way. Right, so I've got two covers on uh, either side of the mower, plastic coverings to take off. Need an eight millimeter socket for this. There's only one nut on this side to take off, or one bolt rather. So that just pops off there. So I've exposed the oil filter on that side. Take this cover off this side. That's exposed the, the drain plug for the oil when I change the oil. You can see the starter motor is just in there as well. Right, I'm just going to do a cold start now. I'm going to warm up the engine oil a bit so it's easier to flow out when I change the oil. Right, so I've let the engine run for a couple of minutes just to warm up the oil. Uh, vented out the gases, we're all clear there. Now what I usually do here is um, just lift one side of the mower up a little bit, forward underneath, so that the mower is going to tip the oil out of that side better, I'll get more of the oil out, more of the old oil out. So this is the drain plug cap for the oil, just turn that a little bit clockwise and it pulls out. And there's the old oil pouring out, nice and black, about two litres to come out there. That's going to be full now. I've got an old container there, I'll put all my waste oil in that, keep it all together. So I'll just swap this tub over, make a bit of mess as I go. Yeah, waste oil, it stinks. Right, while well, the rest of the oil's draining out, I'll change the air filter. So there's just two screws on top here. So. This is, um, I think this is like the Mark II X155R. Uh, the previous machine I had had a uh, slightly different layout with bits and pieces. So the previous one had four bolts. So if you've got the old one, it'll have four bolts and it'll have a pre filter, like a foam pad, as well as a, a different shape to this um, air filter. So this has just got one piece, one cylinder air filter and it just pulls out and the new one just it's got a, a hole on one end you just push that in there and press it down and that's the air filter changed 
probably have a bit of a wipe round in there as well with the wipe after to get uh, any of the dust out of there. Right, change the spark plugs next. There's two spark plugs because it's a V-twin engine. So pull the uh, lead off. Got a 10 millimeter spark plug socket, just so you, you can get all the right sizes ready if you want to service one of these. These spark plugs are NGK BCPR5ESs for this particular model. This mower has been replaced now by, I think it's an X166 instead of a 155. So that's the newest model. So yeah, that's do a change, it's a little bit black. I haven't got a feeler gauge to check the electro gap, but well, I have gone somewhere, don't know where it is, but usually these plugs, they come with the right gap ready. So if there's a problem, you can always take them out and adjust them again. Don't over tighten them either. Just put them in. You've got to sort of judge how tight they should be. Let's get to the end of the thread and give it a, an extra little tweak with this, with the wrench. So that's one done. Right, change the plug on the other side now. See the old fil air filter there on this side is pretty full of dust because I have been um, mowing a few verges on the side of tracks where it's been very dusty in the summer. So I've had this machine just over two years now, probably two and a half years. So 500 hours is quite a lot for a machine like this. It's not a commercial John Deere mower. It is actually a, a domestic model, but it does the job perfectly for what I need. If I went for a bigger mower, I'd struggle to get through gateways and things then, that's the only problem. Some of these customers' garden gates are quite narrow. Let's see the plug off, quite black again. It's a good idea to have a general clean up of the mower when you're servicing it as well. So give the whole thing a good wipe down, get all the dust off, take the covers off the um, around the belts, clean all the, the grass out. One important part of the service here now is replacing this cap because if you forget to replace this you're going to pour new oil into the engine and it's going to pour straight out the bottom. So we'll fit that back on. Just push it in and turn it anti-clockwise. Right, change the oil filter now. Oil rags at the ready because they usually make a bit more mess. So I've already got it a bit loose. There we are, spill oil everywhere. Tip as much as I can in the container. Got the new oil filter there. You usually put a tiny bit of oil or grease around the seal just so it's easier to uh, remove the next time. Otherwise, the rubber can dry out a bit and get tight to undo. I have got a oil filter removal tool, which is quite handy when things are difficult to get undone by hand wipe up some of this excess oil mess. Right, so I've got the new filter here. Let's put a bit of, I'll put a bit of the old oil around the seal. That'll be enough to make it easier to release next time. Do it up fairly tight. I don't want it leaking because it has had a just very slow leak in the past. It's not been on tight enough. Next job, change the fuel filter here. Right, I've got the new inline fuel filter here. I find this job a little bit fiddly sometimes because you've got a clip on each pipe at each end. So you have to press that. Clip with some pliers and move it. I tend to move it up, up the pipe a little bit, so it's off the plastic on the filter. You can take that out of there, so that when you take it off and it starts leaking, you can hold the pipe up out of the way. Give 
to twist and pull it. Actually, I'm going to get the other end ready as well. I'm not a mechanic at all, I just try and find the best way of doing these things myself. Didn't want to come off today. I suppose I could get some warm water and heat the pipe up. It'd be one option as well. Goes. A little pest of a thing. Right, I cut you off there for a couple of minutes. Um, as I said, this is at least my least favourite job. I had to lever it between the pipe and the filter with an old tool. It's, a bit, uh, it's gone very stiff. Well, it seems to be stiff every time you do it. But that's coming off now. And you can put that up there. Well, there's not much petrol coming in that end. It's uh, right, so you pull that off. I've got the new one fitted in there, leaking petrol. So let's get that connected up. There we are. Rubber pipes in place. Let's have a look at this one. Bit mangled where I've pulled it apart. It can only go on one way, it's got an arrow that shows which way the fuel should go through. So make sure you put it on the right way around. There's a couple of uh, little bits of dirt in there, but it's, uh, it doesn't look too dirty. It's, it's not going to, uh, it's doing its job anyway, blocking the, the dirt and letting the fuel through. So I'll just move these clips back down the pipe in place to hold the pipe on. Didn't seem to need much help holding it on though because it was a bit of a nightmare to get it off. I don't know if anyone's got any tips of how to get these pipes off. That's that clip in place. I'll just pull this one up. If you were doing the service yourself, like I'm doing, now this machine gets a lot of work so it's worth changing the fuel filter but if you're doing this service yourself you could just look at the condition of the the filter and if it looks fairly clean then you know you could get away with just leaving it it's not likely to be a problem this this machine's done a lot of hours in a fairly short period of time so it needs fairly regularly servicing okay so that bit's done We've changed the fuel filter, the oil filter, we've emptied the old oil out, changed the air filter, changed the spark plugs. Just need to put new oil in and a bit of a clean up and then that's your sort of basic service done. Um, other bits to, uh, to do is to grease up the axles and the wheels, the bearings. Okay, so we'll uh, fill the oil up right where the dipstick is. I'm using Four stroke Briggs and Stratton engine oil. It's handy if you've got a container with a, a measuring guide on it. So I'll put roughly two litres in, let the oil settle and then check the dipstick a few times to, to get it right in between minimum and maximum. It's pretty important to check the oil level as well after the engine's been running the first time because a little bit of the oil will collect in the oil filter so it could end up a lower level than you think. But in general, every morning when I take the mower out, I have a quick look at the uh, oil level anyway. I don't want to be running a, an engine without enough oil in or with too much oil in. I'm just going to check the condition of the belts now. So you've got a plastic guard on either side as well, covering the belts. 10 millimeter socket. Take three or four of these bolts off just to take the guard off. Even though there's a guard here, there'll still be plenty of grass piled up underneath because it's not totally sealed. There are there are gaps around the guard where the, the grass flies in. Not so much from when you're bagging grass, but when you're just cutting and leaving the grass and it's wet, then uh, the grass cuttings pile up over the over the tires when it's wet, and then they fly over everywhere. And probably more so when it's dry actually, because when it's dry the grass is in finer particles 
So when you're cutting and leaving it, it'll just blow in between the gaps on the guard. Well, this one was done 500 hours, and the last one I had did about 800 hours, and I've never had to change any belts. All right, three bolts there. Get this off. There we are. There's the usual clump of grass underneath. So we need to clean that out. Into a bucket. And the belt is still, this belt anyways, is still in good condition. You can see the pulleys and things there. The, the belts still haven't frayed after 500 hours use. Good tension in them. On the other side now, I've just got two bolts on this one. One at the front and back. And that should just pull out now. Two leaves in there for the grass. Doesn't take long to fill up. Well, it probably does take long to fill up if you're doing uh, just a few cuts now and again, but when this is having several hours a week use that it doesn't take long. So I need to clear that out, but the belt on this side again, that's in good condition still. Look at that, I've got a bucket full of grass there. And it's already been emptied uh, a couple of months ago as well. But, uh, we're in the winter now and it needs clearing out before it, uh, you can probably get some mice nesting in there otherwise. Or you could come to use it again next year and if this is dried out enough it's potentially a fire hazard with the friction from the belts. Let's just see how it turns over after changing all the filters and plugs and oil and everything. I'll hit the choke again. Right so that's a lot cleaner than it was but not as clean as it could be. Next stage would be to get a hose pipe and a brush and give it a more thorough clean and uh, give it a clean underneath the deck around the blades, get anything caught up under there, cleaned off. I'm not going to bother showing that on this video. It's time to clean and grease your nipples. I'll put a bit of WD-40 on them and wipe them with a rag before getting the grease gun out. So you've got some on the front axles there, you got some on the wheel bearings on the wheel. There we are, that's all caked in muck. Clean that. So both sides, so there's four there all together. You've got one underneath on the axle or the pivot point there. That one to do. There's some on the um, I'm going to call them the uh, blade drive shaft below the belt. There's one there, there's one on the other side and a couple at the back then. I use a grease gun with a flexible hose on it. It's a lot easier to fit on and off. Some of the uh, access points are a bit fiddly. So I'll just give that a couple of pumps of grease. This is the one on the inside of the wheel. Just turn the wheel around so it's more accessible really. All the guards back on, it's all put back together. Topped up the oil a little bit more again. Let's just turn it over and see how it sounds again this time. Pretty instant start in there, happy with that. It was running pretty smoothly before I serviced it, but uh, now it's uh, running smoother again, running like a deer. So these are the new blades. Always make sure you get a left hand and a right hand. As they're stamped here, right hand, left hand each side is different so they meet like that and cut that way throwing up the, the chute the grass collecting chute with the wings facing up 24 millimeter i always use a solid bar to get them loose and use the ratchet after so you don't strain your ratchet set park it on the ramp just to get enough space to get underneath and take the little blade off these blades have been on and off quite regularly so the bolt isn't too bad. 
no pin or anything, just one bolt and a washer, or one nut and a washer, I should say. So they've gone out of shape quite a bit now. There's only so much you can resharpen blades, especially with chippings. You can take not notches out of them. Find it a little bit more fiddly putting them back on because you're going to hold the blade up, hold the washer up, and put the nut on. It's got that star shape in the middle to lock it in place. Give it a last tighten with the solid bar. This one's pretty similar to the other one. Still got some edge left on it. rounded a bit too much to make it easy to to sharpen it's on tight enough so that was my video there of uh, servicing the John Deere X45i bar um, plenty of other videos lined up when I get around to uh, making them of course thanks for watching see you again